Welcome back, Spikes. Welcome to another episode of In Response. This one, we are going to be talking about the recent Lexi gauntlet that mm -hmm. we showcased on our channel. Um, so obviously, I'm Bill. This is Elliot. We were the two players in the Lexi gauntlet. I was playing Lexi. Elliot was playing a variety of decks. Other things. Other stuff that non-Lexi decks. Dudes and ladies. <laughs> Dudes and ladies. Um, and the uh, the reason behind the exercise really was just to you know showcase how a specific Specific deck sort of either flourishes or um, fails in a variety of different mm -hmm. um, different matchups. Yeah, see what the strengths and weaknesses are. Uh, it's sort of a small sample size, but it should give you kind of a good enough idea of uh, how individual decks. Uh, function. So yeah, we want to definitely put an asterisk up there on like this is how the matchup <laughs> works. But you know, yeah, like some of them weren't fantastic uh, showings from, you know, some of them weren't great for me, some of them weren't great for you. Exactly. But that's how it works. That's that's part of the game. Yeah, it's also a card game, right? It's it's Happens. a card game. There's a lot of variants and stuff. But yeah. um, so something that uh, we wanted to do was just kind of um, briefly break down each of the matchups, how we felt they went uh, from both of our perspectives, um, point out, you know, if there were any mistakes that we made, things that we would do differently now that we've actually played it. Um, this is coming from uh, a position of, you know, we have played these matchups between ourselves um, with, you know, some amount of regularity, but uh, now that we can see them like on camera and we can kind of scrutinize our plays and everything, uh, we figure that we have a little bit better of an opportunity to comment on it and hopefully pass along some info to you at home, the mm -hmm. viewers. Um, so let's get into Jump it. right in, yeah. I suppose. So the first game that we posted on the channel was a uh, Dash versus Lexi game. Dash was the, um, the, the away me. team. The me. Yeah, the away team. I, I guess, right? Nice. Is that, is that how that works? It's a sports reference for all you nerds out there. Anybody that... out there watch sports? <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, the uh, the turnout for that game was uh, Lexi ended up winning, mm -hmm. but there is an asterisk next to that. Um, this this episode's full of asterisk uh, asterisks. Actually, is how that's Ooh. that's uh, pluralized. He knows the plural, so, ladies. Uh, do you want to talk about what happened with that? Why there's an asterisk? Yeah. So um, <laughs> we are consummate professionals mm -hmm. as usual, and um, our overhead camera was slightly mispositioned. So we filmed the game and then had to refilm the game because the overhead was unusable. It was punched in to the max. I think you could see maybe 40% of each of our Yeah, it was not, was not usable, unfortunately. <laughs> um, but yeah, it actually, I think, um, unfortunately doesn't provide it to you, but provides some interesting nuance to the matchup for mm -hmm. us because it kind of went 100 in one direction and then 100 in the reverse direction in Absolutely. the game that you guys actually ended up seeing. So in the game that uh, didn't end up airing, what happened was, uh, if I remember correctly, we might have some amount of unusable footage about this. I don't know if we're going to be able to splice it in or not, but um, Elliot essentially had like the perfect natural rollout. His um, dash list that he uses, uh, I know a lot of people play uh, sort of like a more control, more control pistol yeah. based version, um, but you prefer like the sort of all out aggro, um, like combo into maximum velocity. If my card does not say boost, I, I send it back. <laughs> So, so yeah, a lot of your turns end up being, you know, uh, put in as much damage as you can here mm -hmm. and there, and then potentially set up a, like, boost into boost into boost into max velocity after cracking the live right. gauntlet, like, have, you know, 20 or 30 damage turns, mm -hmm. and have a little bit of more of an explosive uh, turn structure. So, that's basically what ended up happening in the first game. I think it was tur his turn two, um, he was able to, it was like red zero to 60, red zero to 60, red, like, uh, one of the hit. yeah one of the ones yeah. and then max, and then max velocity. velocity for like yeah it was like 28 damage or something and i just wasn't able to get the game back from that i had to use too many of my resources to make sure that i didn't just straight up die um and i wasn't able to pull it back from that mm -hmm. and uh that is sort of obviously what happens um against your deck relatively frequently if it's, <laughs> if it's allowed to like set up and do stuff um normally there's more than one setup turn but you know, that's, yeah. that's neither here nor there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Typically, we're like fiddling around with our arsenal and like the techlo cores and stuff. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I kind of just drew the nuts, like you said, <laughs> on, and I yeah executed it on turn two. So it's kind of okay that that game didn't uh, make it to the 
the publishing presses or whatever, right? Because <laughs> not a whole lot to take away from that. I mean, it was still like an interesting thing to see happen because I mean, it, it doesn't happen. I like frequently. It. Yeah. yeah. It was very um, cool for and me. then <laughs> when we refilmed that, it ended oh, up. I didn't being, like that so much. Yeah, it ended up being basically <laughs> the exact opposite, where I had a really great rollout. I was able to just fire off a bunch of arrows, mm -hmm. um, had a bunch of pretty wide turns, and you just kind of weren't able to get your footing. I think that was yeah. the game you drew a bunch of items. I was going to say, I, I think the death turn was like I had two items in my hand or something even yeah. like um, which again like happens right yeah. like you're a, a dash deck you have to play these items because they're really good oh, yeah. when you get to play them <laughs> and sometimes the downside is they don't block yeah so absolutely yeah. so uh, something that I just wanted to point out for that uh, there wasn't really a specific turn or I think we both made good decisions in terms of mm -hmm. equipment and like plays in general um, for that, for both of those games, really. But uh, the one thing that I wanted to point out there is that um, because they were both just really uh, like redline aggro decks, um, you can really see the importance of not only who goes first, but also just how consistently you can have power turns. Right. Um, there, there really isn't that room like you would have in other matchups where you can kind of take a slower approach mm -hmm. and like set up or like you know p ping in damage here and there. It really is just who can throw out the most damage. Mm -hmm. um, there probably are ways to take it a little bit slower, but um, especially against dash, I've I've played against specifically this build a bunch of times. <laughs> you kind of kind of can't because otherwise you just have the maximum velocity turn. Like if you take it too slow. Then... Right. If you let me set up too much. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. Um, I think that was a good matchup. I think it's about 50 50. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, plus 10 plus right. minus 10%. 60 40 on either side, depending on builds, depending on player skill. Yeah. <laughs> just just roll out in general. Yeah. So it's uh, it, it was a good matchup, though. I really liked that. Mm -hmm. um, just the the way that played out. Um, game two was uh, Lexi versus Ira. Um, Ira is just really good at using minimal resources to block a surprising amount of damage. Right. Um, just the way that Ira decks are usually positioned to, to be. Mm -hmm. And Ira ended up taking that one. Mm -hmm. um, we'll, we'll put it up on the screen here, but uh, if you've ever played against a ninja deck, not even necessarily Ira, but Flick Flack is dirt nasty yep like yep. every ninja deck plays six of it because it's or it's, six or nine of it because yeah. it's just it's just too good it's bonkers and yeah so ira um it's funny because you've actually played more ira at this point than i have <laughs> um <laughs> but uh like obviously the deck is just uh, like built around having enough zero cost blue cards mm -hmm. and enough one cost red cards that you go like pitch the blue attack with a Kodachi attack with a Kodachi or the Zephyr needle and then attack with a one cost red for usually five, sometimes seven if it's flying kick or whatever. Right. Yeah. And then block <laughs> with two cards from your hand. Yeah. And like you're putting out one and then two and then five and your opponent is getting blocked out mm -hmm. and you just get to rinse and repeat. I think the, the craziest thing too about this specific uh, game was that it went you know, like I, I was able to put out a decent amount of damage mm -hmm. and kind of uh, get you off your footing for a little bit. But then I just had one turn where I wasn't able to put out quite enough damage and you were able to sort of claw back the tempo and it just went right back from there. Right. Um, and we got you in that little like kind of the sweet spot or whatever, right? Where you're at like one or two and I'm poking in with the Kadachis and mm -hmm. you are forced to block and it's basically just the. The writing's on the wall at that point. Yeah, it's it's very much you get to that inevitability sort of juncture mm -hmm. where uh, against Ninja, if you get yourself down to like, I would say even like less than three, right. you're in a really tough spot. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, I think it was actually a really good um, uh, example as well of just the power of uh, Ira in terms of ine inevitability and also the weakness of Lexi, specifically Lightning Lexi, as the game goes on a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. um, the more the more turns that you have and the more arrows you see early, if, if you have like a really strong start early but you're not able to close it out, there is the possibility of just not having enough arrows in the late game because, you know, most of the time Lexi doesn't run that many other attacks. Right. Like, I think I run Heaven's Claws and Lightning Surge. Um, <laughs> to fuse, typically. To, to fuse. Yeah. Like, they do come in for damage, but even then, it's like, okay, well, I missed on my arrows. I have to attack in once for, like, four and then end. Um, so it's it, it was sort of a, a mixture of both of those things where um, the Ira deck has really good inevitability and the Lexi deck has less good 
um, like long term game plan. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I, again, I think that that was really well played by both of us. I don't think there were really any sideboard decisions. The only thing, the the game actually would have been much worse if you had a mask of momentum. <laughs> right. Like you still ended up winning that game even without the mask of momentum just completely warping the game around it. Yeah. I would have been in a much worse spot if I had to just consistently throw away one card every turn to make sure that you didn't get um, get mask triggers. But yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, so then the one after that is a uh, fan favorite uh, from me. I'm the fan. Still um, like it. <laughs> this was uh, Lexi versus Reinar. Ooh. And Lexi ended up winning this one. Uh, for those of you who did actually see that game, uh, there's a pretty good reason as to why Lexi won that one. Uh, and it was just sort of you know, uh, it was a good show, a good rollout, uh, a really lucky rollout as well. Um, this game specifically, I think, really showcased the power of Lexi going second. Yeah, I was going to bring that up if you weren't, but yeah. I, you know, consummate professional build a page, always on top <laughs> of things. Yeah, uh, basically just completely nullifying my first turn, right? Like I attempted to go for like a pretty big intimidate turn mm-hmm. with some damage on top of it. And you just ended the turn with a six card hand. Yeah. I think I did nine damage and yeah. then could not bring the game back. <laughs> cause... Well, yeah, because because you did. I think you intimidated two or three times. And just mm-hmm. in response to the first intimidate, I was like, okay, load twice. I have no cards in hand. Sure. And then, um, yeah, I just drew into a bunch of really good arrows. I had the right colors in order to use my perch grapplers and I had the lightning press to fuse like all oh. of my stuff, which lightning press is the most disgusting lightning card to fuse. Oh, with I hate that card. Because it is literally just look at all these that I still have. <laughs> yeah. Bill loves that one. He loves showing you the lightning press and then either casting it or not casting it. He doesn't even have to sometimes, you know? <laughs> sometimes just, just showing it is Yeah, good. once you know it's there, you're like over blocking sometimes and then you're just you're just losing the game. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think for this one, there really isn't that much to say. I don't think the matchup is quite as uh, imbalanced as that one game showcased. Right. Um, I think it is, again, like calling back to what we were talking about with Ira, um, like if, if Lexi has a stronger, I think Lexi has a stronger early game than mm-hmm. Reinar, but Reinar has better inevitability just with the ability to, you know, Lexi can't use her weapon just to attack. Right. Um, so like you, if you block down to one card, Reinar can still attack with his weapon. Lexi cannot. So it's, uh, it's a little bit more inevitability if the game goes longer. Uh, Reinar also does get to run Reckless Swing, which is not irrelevant. It's still a, a defense reaction Mm -hmm. um, that Lexi doesn't get to play really. (laughs) So, um, so yeah, I think uh, the matchup isn't quite as imbalanced. I do like Lexi's chances again in like the first two or three turns. Right. Um, But past that, I think Reinar definitely starts to skew the, uh, the numbers a little bit. Mm hmm. Um, then the next one after this, uh, is, uh, is a failing of mine and something I actually do want to talk about. So this was Lexi versus Viscerai. Mm-hmm. And Viscerai ended up taking this one. I like that. Um, so I do want to say the reason I say that it's a failing on my part is, uh, I just historically don't know how to play against Runeblade. Um, it's, it's a tough matchup for me for some reason. Like, uh, any Runeblade doesn't matter. I uh, I just make these like small decisions that end up really adding up over the course of the game. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, how did you think that game went? Um, yeah, if I'm recalling correctly, I think I had a double Mordred Tide turn. Yes. <laughs> which is all I've ever wanted uh, and all I ever want to have ever. <laughs> so it was great. It was great for me. Um, I really like Viscerai. I think, um, yeah, like there's just lots of really interesting decision points to make with the deck and like sequencing and stuff like that Mm -hmm. in the play. And yeah, it's like you're saying, I don't necessarily think this is the only time I'm going to say this, get this on record. (laughs) I don't necessarily think it's your failings, (laughs) but like, I think Runeblade is really tricky to play against, right? Cause you're like, um, you're either like kneecapping yourself blocking or I guess not specifically not blocking, but like arcane barriering a bunch of rune chants and then maybe not being able to ever get tempo back and just getting mm-hmm. chipped out over time. Or they just have a, like a really explosive turn if they're like the slightly different viscerai deck, like the OTK or something. Yeah. I actually think um, the mid range version that I was playing is better mm-hmm. against uh, your 
a Lightning Lexi deck than yeah. the OTK would have been, I think you probably don't get enough turns <laughs> in the in the OTK version to yeah. Uh, take it over the edge there. That's that's basically exactly what I was going to say. I think the OTK version, even if it takes you like, you know, three or four turns to set up, I think that that's a lot of time to just be taking off with Lexi being able to fire a bunch of arrows at you. I think the mid-range version, even being able to chip in for five to seven damage a turn, which is like pretty reasonable, pretty average, I would mm-hmm. say, is like definitely good enough, especially with the split damage. Um, I think that, like, if I remember correctly, this matchup also wasn't played too poorly by either of us. The one thing that I would say is I would probably add in, uh, knowing what I know now, I would probably add in an additional piece of Null Rune equipment. Yeah, or a, a different piece at least, right? So, Because, yeah. uh, I think again, I think what happened in this one, right, is you ended up trying to kind of push it over the edge by breaking your piece yep. that had an arcane barrier on it. Yeah, so. it was, uh, I, I thought I was going to be safe enough with just bullseye bracers, mm-hmm. um, which does have arcane barrier on it, which I love. But then, yeah, you end up using it, and then I, I was just caught out without any arcane barrier at all, and I lost to a single rune chant at one. <laughs> yeah. So even if I had one more piece, then maybe I would have been able to, or if I just swapped out the gloves entirely, um, like I wouldn't have been able to push quite as much, but, you know, then maybe the game goes one more turn and I'm able to push it through. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's, um, it it was still a good game. And, uh, I always enjoy getting practice with, uh, or against Runeblade because again, I think that I just have like kind of a tough time playing against the class in general. Anytime you want to come down and get your ass kicked, you (laughs) let me know. It's just, why does, why does LSS keep printing good Runeblade stuff? I just don't, I'm bad at the matchup. Like I don't want 50% of our decks to be (laughs) Runeblade, please. Yeah. Um, Yeah, and then the very last one that we wanted to talk about is uh, it was Lexi versus Bravo, and Lexi did end up taking this one. Uh, And I think it was relatively similar to the Reinar game, probably not in the same uh, sort of extreme. I don't think, if I remember correctly, there wasn't one like huge explosive turn that really pushed it over. I think it was just consistently being able to push enough damage through and threaten as much damage as possible that you kind of had to full block and not have other options right yeah like um my bravo list is the version that's playing like two zealous belting to um rouse the ancients so Mm -hmm. it is uh skewed aggressive Mm -hmm. and i do play it that way (laughs) um i don't know if uh anybody made that connection necessarily (laughs) while i was playing these five decks but i um, I'm a pretty small brain player. I like big number hit fast, not think about things, block, uh, make small beneficial moves kind of uh, it is, strategies. It is extremely hard to not get excited when you read Crippling Crush for the first time. Oh. That's that's all I'm going to say on that. Like Just a big shirtless <laughs> man punching... <laughs> Like it's, it's all it costs, I want to be. You look it's all at it I and you're do. like, How, "This costs seven. How do you cast it?" And then every single Bravo player is like, "Let me tell you a story." <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so I think this was um, again not necessarily um, skewed as much. I do think specifically this Bravo list that you have maybe has a little bit of a worse time against aggressive decks like mm-hmm. Lexi. Um, there are obviously different Bravo decks that skew a little bit more defensively, yeah. um, especially with the amount of fridges that you can run. Like you have um, you have uh, Crater Fist and Tectonic Plating and like Skull Cap if you Skullcap want. Skull Cap if yeah. you have it. Even just um, Helm of Ice and Speak still blocks for one, blocks one. And then you get to do the combo turn with, um, with Stamp Authority. Mm, I like that. Um, <laughs> so like you do have like a pretty decent amount of block just in equipment alone. And mm-hmm. then you have like defense reactions and stuff. So I think if it was a more mid-range or even more control-based Bravo, then I think we could... Um, we could likely see Bravo being a little bit more favored. Mm -hmm. But personally, just from what I saw, I think that um, in this specific matchup, Lexi kind of is a little bit better at being aggressive just Mm -hmm. because you have lower cost stuff and easy access to go again and stuff like that, being able to go wide. Um, But yeah, so that was, that was all of the matches. That was a a pretty quick rundown of it. But (laughs) um, yeah. How did you end up feeling um, playing against Lexi? Yeah, I don't think, like, even though, uh, I guess, obviously, not a spoiler, because you've probably watched all five at this point, but Lexi (laughs) did end up uh, winning three, as opposed to losing three, and me winning three, which would have mean that I was the winner. Yeah. 
but uh, I don't think that I ever felt super out of it except in that Reinar game, right? Like yeah. <laughs> um, everything else felt like if I had made slightly different decisions and again, even down to the point of deck building, mm. like I think um, these are all workable matchups for yeah, sure. Absolutely. Uh, is there any advice that you would give to people that are seeing Lightning Lexi in their meta uh, in terms of skewing their deck building or... Uh, teching differently or even playing a certain strategy? Uh, was there anything that really like jumped out at you? Um, oh, I don't know that I'm the, the person to ask <laughs> about that. I don't, uh, again, small, tiny <laughs> brain. So your, your advice is just hit harder? Uh, my advice is uh, block lightning press. <laughs> <laughs> always anticipate lightning press but also assume they never have it yeah so if you, if you think they have lightning press they do <laughs> block three extra <laughs> yeah um but yeah anyway i think that just about wraps up uh my thoughts on the gauntlet i i really liked it again uh like even just down to i like lexi as a deck um mm -hmm. i liked seeing you know um just how she performs in different matchups so that i can see how to be a little bit more comfortable in these matchups. Right. And uh, there is a lot of like turn structuring that happens when I play Lexi in terms of I just sit there and I'm like, okay, I have to do this, this, and then figure out what order to do it in properly. But the more that you play in the matchups, the more you can kind of look even more, one more turn ahead mm -hmm. and see if I do this, then what's my best next move? What's the worst next move sort of thing? Um, what's the worst thing they could have, etc. So I think just even down to meta knowledge, um, something like this is really beneficial and I'm excited to do more gauntlets in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely let us know if this was cool for you. Uh, <laughs> if you want us to do anything differently or think we did something really good. Yeah. Preferably both. If you have negative, also give us like a, but this was cool. Yeah. No, it has to be, what is it? A compliment sandwich? Compliment, bad thing, compliment? It has ah, to be that. Except two maybe, compliments? Maybe also just this is the drop, internet. The, drop the negative part, just compliments. This is this is YouTube comments. <laughs> I don't know if you can ask them to say two nice things. This is true, especially if Patty's in there. Patty's. Oh, true. Um, Shout out. But yeah, also, uh, so comment down below if you think you, we did cool stuff, and also comment down below with other matchups you would like to see, other mm -hmm. decks you would like to see run through the Goliath gauntlet, is what I like to call it. I don't know if that's the official name or not, but that's what I'm saying. I think we thought of that in game five or we something did. it was at the end of game five <laughs> so sad but uh but yeah anyway uh thank you guys so much for checking in if you haven't watched the gauntlet and are just watching this video uh go why wa why'd you do that it? yeah i mean this is kind of a tldr but still um but if you did watch them already congratulations you won uh anyway thank you guys so much and we will see you in the next one bye hey thanks for checking out the spike feeders on youtube before you close the window, make sure you click subscribe for more great flesh and blood content.